What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Marcel P. Black, checking in once again. We got episode number seven, track number seven, you know what I'm saying, for um, Everything I Love with the Everything I Love podcast. Uh, once again, I am your host, Marcel P. Black. If y'all remember when I was doing the Search of the Black Messiah Deconstructed, I was running my mouth the whole time by myself. Sometimes I had guests. I was doing all the talking. <laughs> we flipped it, as you've seen thus far. And, uh, you know, we have the people who, uh, you know, who... I love people I'm close to. They interviewing me once again. Got my kin folk, Dr. Jamila Williams. Hi, Jamila. How you doing today? Hello, hello. How you doing? I'm, good. I'm, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. It's good to see you again. All right. So today's song we're gonna break down is next Wednesday, produced by Jay Philly. Uh, the interviewer again, like I said, Jamila Williams. Uh, J- Jamila is a psychologist, and uh, this song definitely talks about mental health. So it wasn't an accident that I I, I sent her this song. To interview me about, you know what I mean? It wasn't an accident. Right. So yeah, so I'm turning it over to you. Okay. Um, first of all, I did want to say that like I started this song, you sent it to me, I played it, I played like the first um, I don't know, 15 seconds and I had to pause it. It was <laughs> it was like it touched me, you know. Obviously, because everything we've gone through with your father passing recently, and then you know, it also, that pain for you brings back the pain of when my father passed a few years ago. And so that was part of the reason I know I was like a little late in getting like my questions, like letting you know when I was going to be ready to do the interview because I was like, I could listen to this song again. And I didn't, like, it was, like, it was, it was hard at first. But um, when I finally like went back to it, then I was like, it's perfect. Like, it's so much about that, like, process. Um, like you said, me being a psychologist and, like, hearing kind of your process of that almost from the other side. So, anyway, to my questions, I just wanted to tell you that. Um, so, like you said, the song is about uh, therapy. And I guess my first question was, like, did you find it hard to start to like take that first step to to go into therapy? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was. I'm not just. Hmm. Was it hard? Everything was hard at the time. Um, fair, fair. Every, every, everything was hard, right? And you know, and you know, I was a. By no means did I get my PhD or whatever, or I'm not a psychologist, but I was I was a mental health counselor for three years, three and a half years. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I knew the power of therapy and counseling, right? But you know, man, like th- those first uh few months, you know, I was calling you, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. well, hold on, get your trouble yeah. about. But uh, you know what I'm saying, but 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 you and I were talking or whatever. Um so just, yeah. just you know, when, when you know, early in the process of grief, um you feel so helpless that you can't even ask for help. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you, feel, you just feel Absolutely. so you feel so um, nihilistic that you feel like mm-hmm. change what I'm going through, even if it's stuff that you know that can help you out, right? Like, um, yeah, you know. So, so um, it 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 had gotten to the point to where like, um, uh, you know, the first three or four months, like, I, uh, uh, blur. Like, mm-hmm. I remember staying in Ardmore for a whole month and don't remember any of that time. Um, right. I remember getting back to Baton Rouge, you know what I'm saying, before I started back with my summer job. So I don't know what happened from, I don't remember what happened from <laughs> the end of April, probably until maybe June when I started doing training for my job. I don't remember what happened. I don't know right. I don't know what I ate. I don't know when all I know is all I know is um I couldn't sleep mm-hmm. and I didn't want to get out of bed. Um Great. but I don't know what I did to pass the time. Maybe play Xbox. I don't know. I really don't know what happened. Um Great. I don't know when I when I first started uh when I first started uh uh like working my job, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like yeah. doing summer training or whatever. We was having, I went from like literally not sleeping to maybe passing out 
you know, finally about like maybe nine to 10 o'clock in the morning to sleep until whatever, to having to get up to yeah. be on the training call at nine o'clock on Zoom. And I don't know how I did yeah. it. I don't know where I was. Yeah. I don't, I, I, it was just, and so, um, it was, it was, it was one particular, t- and like it, it got to the point to where like, um, um, we started doing the virtual learning and, uh, you know, me being a teacher and my kids doing it and like, my kids were like leaving their virtual classes to come check on me. Uh, and they come and they bringing me yeah. food. And, and like, yeah. literally, like, like, it was days when school first started to where, like, literally, I had a one hour class. You know what I'm saying? And I'm taking mental health days. I, right. I, I couldn't get from the, the, the foot of my, I couldn't get to where I was laying out on my king size bed to the foot of my bed to get to my computer, right? Right. And uh, there was one particular thing that scared me. Uh, it scared me. Um, I was, you know, I'm 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 a pretty chill dude, right? And right. I'm 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 driving back to my house, and there's a bike lane there. So there was a guy on a bike, and I saw him. He didn't see me, right? Uh-huh. So I, I I slowed down. He didn't see me, and he just kept on going. I slowed down to let him uh-huh. pass. But I think once he, once he finally saw how close he was to getting hit, even though I wasn't about to hit him, but he right. was going to get hit because he wasn't paying attention at all. Once, right. once he yeah. saw how close how close he was to getting hit or whatever, that he could have got hit, he started like mouthing off. Mm. And like, Jamila, when I say I lost it, like I, I tried to chase him on a bicycle, like I left the car parked in the street. You know, I'm, I'm, I wasn't catching him. But like, like if I if, if I would have called him Jamila, I would have went to jail. Like I was, I was just like, I mean, the angriest I had ever been in a while. You know what I'm saying? Just like, yeah. If I like, I need, I need to kill somebody. I need, to, I need to hurt somebody else to make somebody feel what I was hurting. Uh, and I, I remember telling right. my partner, my partner Alfred, who was like a, a, a one of my best friends and like a, whatever. We talk every single day. And he lost his brother like a couple of years, like back in 2014 or whatever. He started going to therapy. Right. And he was like, Marcel, if you don't start getting some help, then the mm-hmm. person that you hate right now is going to be there forever. Like, or whatever. He was the, or, or the person that you, this person that you don't like, is that's who you're going to become. Right. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. I, and, 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 and I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. I like, like, right. It's, 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 it's just, it, it wasn't necessarily me being stubborn like resistant to like going to see a therapist but it was just like like i said when you just kind of in that nihilistic mindset yeah you don't feel like yeah. anything will help like because right. a part of you just wants it to go back to the way that it was right it's it's, it's so like that's where i was it's so exactly. like 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 so so with this whole album with this whole album um and i i've explained this before in before and after on different podcasts or whatever but just like this whole album is a, is a period piece. It's a concept piece that uh you know you know my, my, my you know uh my father passed on March 18, 2020, and uh I didn't see his grave. I didn't go back to his grave until uh January 30, 2021. So this album is a period piece, kind of mirror. Like, it's like an audio document of mm-hmm. um what I went through through this time. Right. So like this song is one of the three songs on the album that really document like like these are the mood swings that I was going through, right? So this song right here, right. it uh it uh it represents when I was just like so overwhelmed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That I had to go get go get my mm-hmm. mental or whatever. And uh big big shout out to uh Dr. Shane Russell, what have you, Sunflower Counseling. If you're in Bad Rouge right. or Louisiana, or she practice, she can practice virtually in Texas too. But if you're in Texas or Louisiana, I strongly recommend her services. Think about the watching or whatever. But uh, shout out to Dr. Shane Russell, man. She really uh she really shook your boy back. I miss her. I gotta find somebody else or whatever, because it's been a lot, you know, relocating up here to Oklahoma. But um yeah. I'm a strong advocate of it. And uh, you know, a, 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 a lot of counselors, especially our black folks or whatever, like um I didn't have insurance, so we worked something out. Right on the, ca- mm-hmm. on the cash, on the cash tip that made it affordable. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them, yeah. you gotta ask. You just gotta ask. You know what I'm saying? Like you Absolutely. don't got the insurance to go for it. If you gotta ask, they 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 set aside a couple clients to so where they can do that with you. You know what I'm saying? So right, yeah. 
whatever. We can yeah. if we can put down buying Jordans for a month, that'll get us maybe two <laughs> sessions. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know? Right. Um, I guess that kind of rolls into my next question was which was like, so now that you've gone through that process and like you said, your doctor is super helpful for you, like what would you tell other people and especially in the black community, because we still um people are resistant, you know, uh, resistant to going to therapy, resistant to telling their business, resistant, right? Like, what would you tell people that were kind of stuck in guessing or, like, didn't know if they should or had, like, reservations about going to therapy? Would do it. Do it. Like, we, 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 I mean, it don't, 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 it don't, it don't take a pandemic or it don't take grief. Like, Afri- like so this this thing about it like our experience as Africans in America we gotta understand that like all of a sudden certain aspects of enslavement was just made illegal mm-hmm. there was no repair from a financial standpoint there was little to no repair from a from a um, political standpoint there was little to no repair yeah. from a from from a cultural standpoint and, and so there's a lot of there's a lot, and that's just at the ending of chattel and slavery. Let's not talk about, you know, the, the trauma that's been passed, passed through our generations from us being poached and kidnapped right. from our mother country. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Like, so, like, mm-hmm. like, so, so, once again, everything's political. You feel me? So, like, like, we, us as African people, we do a whole lot of stuff who, who based out of survival, Based out of having to adapt to a world that's not really meant for us and built for us, or have you? So we all right. all need somebody to talk to. Black men, black, uh, you know, what I'm saying, black women, you know, LGBTQ, whatever. Like it, it is, it is not a, especially to like my my my, my super religious folks. It's like, I mean, mm-hmm. if you got cancer, you got you got cancer. You're not gonna tell tell the Lord that oh, well, I don't need chemo. Right. If if, if your kid is messing up. You're not gonna tell the Lord that you don't need that dialysis. Yeah. You're gonna take that diabetes yeah. medicine. Like you, you go in, in, in any other any other part of you that you that, that deals with your health, you go to the doctor, right? Right. Mental health is the exact same thing. And I think we're so afraid of I think it is and I think I've always been a very kind of transparent and honest person. And I'm s I don't really hold yeah. nothing back now. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. Yeah. Because because <laughs> I, I I I would rather I would rather say out loud what's bothering me and then let me up on, on the inside. And I think a lot too many yeah. of us have been conditioned to let us eat us up, eat us up on the inside. If they, they don't realize that, mm-hmm. like though that you're not saying things out loud, it's still affecting, it's still affecting the way that you do things, and which in turn affects other people. Absolutely. You know so so it's just like mm-hmm. I'm a firm advocate of, you know, if you know, with my therapist. Her style was just letting me talk more than anything, right? She let me talk for the first 50 minutes and the last 10 minutes. It was okay, now I'm gonna give now I'm gonna give you uh some homework based on what you said, right? You have some therapists who right. they teach you, they teach you skill, coping skills or whatever, and you practice the skills during the session, whatever. Like, you know, you, you can literally uh tailor it to your needs. And yeah. Mm-hmm. It just feels it feels so beautiful to be like totally honest with someone with you when you're not being judged and their whole goal is to listen to you and help you out. There ain't no ulterior motive, it ain't nothing like that or have you. And sometimes a complete stranger can tell you something about yourself that you never realized before, better than you know, the person that you might love the most in the world. So I am a strong yeah. advocate for it. Like I said before, like, you know, it is 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 you know, you know, we if you just cut back on fast food or whatever, eat now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever you you, mm-hmm. you know, I I was I was just paying sixty dollars a session. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I was going twice yeah. a month. That, that's just that's just that's a polar. That's a trip to the polo store for me. Yeah. If mm-hmm. this this one paycheck, I don't go to the polo store. I can save up, and I got, boom. You know what I'm saying? I got two fire sessions that 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 right. kept me from going totally off the rail. So it was definitely worth it. It's a worthwhile investment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I tell people that, you know, all the time, you you know, you have to prioritize yourself, your health, like your mental health over, um, I, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I feel like I would 
prioritize my mental health over almost anything else, right? Like, because because if your mind's not in the right place, then you can't do anything else that you're trying to do or you're not going to enjoy it, right? So for me, uh, I mean, I think it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that like to hear it in a song and like for, so, cause I think that's just another way to like reach people or for like other types of people, other people that maybe wouldn't even think about therapy, right? To like, to, I think it just is gonna reach people in a different way or different people that maybe wouldn't have thought about it or, or think it's not for them right or not something that people that they look up to like you would do and so I'm glad that you were like super transparent about that and about how it was helpful for you um and I think what you kind of just answered my uh third question which was like what part of therapy did you feel like was most helpful just getting it all out getting it all out standing out loud and just you know and just yeah just, just getting it out just saying it just sometimes really like it's it's certain things that we can say and think but it's not mm-hmm. real that goes out until you hear it yes sometimes just saying it out loud is just it's just it's, it's it's everything and uh yeah yeah that's that's the that was that was my point i miss it like i gotta i you know i, I just i'm about to start a, start a gig up here monday and so i'm gonna finally get my benefits right, right. Back, finally get my insurance back right. popping as 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 soon as soon as they bang as soon as they bang that insurance, I'm gonna find somebody because um you know it, it definitely became a part of my lifestyle that it has been missing and I've been up here for almost three months now. So you know, yeah. so I, mm-hmm. I, I can definitely tell the difference. So it's time. Right, right. Um the last this is my last question for this song. Did you play the song for your therapist? I have not. I'm gonna send it to her. I'm gonna send it to her. I have not though. You um, absolutely I have, have to. She, 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 she knew I was a rapper. She knew I was. She knew I was a rapper, and she she, uh-huh. she had a son. She had a son. I think she might have played some of my other music. I have not yet, or oh, have you? Um, mm-hmm. and, and it's, it's and, and another thing too, on uh, on Black Messiah, I have a song called Shake mm-hmm. Back, and uh-huh. it's and Shake Back is about me going to the doctor and finding out you know I was pre diabetic. And kind of like that process of, you know, going through that process mm-hmm. of like trying to make that lifestyle change or whatever. So this ain't the first time I, you know, you know, I'm promoting it. You know, <laughs> even you know, it's 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 becoming. It's important that I talk about this. You know what I'm saying? Because for one, this is what I'm going through. But like, man, like I, I don't I don't necessarily remember the stats, but because first of all, hip hop hip hop as a culture, they say the first people born of hip hop generation was 1965, right? And so it's only 2001. Mm-hmm. So like nobody has yet necessarily nobody has ever died of old age of hip hop, right? Right, right. They said, they, they said the, the vast majority of people dying in hip hop culture has been from murder, and then number mm-hmm. two is from preventable diseases. Yep. Like diabetes or stuff like that or whatever hypertension, whatever. Now COVID, like whatever. You know what I'm saying? So um, right. the last thing is kind of like you know acts of nature, right? You know what I'm saying? So, um, a lot of rappers are dying because when they was young, all they did was, uh, you know what I'm saying, smoke, smoke, smoke weed and drink 40s and, you know what I'm saying, right. cocaine and partying and their health is terrible. Like, like diabetes right. might be the most, the most prevalent disease amongst hip hop artists, you know what I'm saying, because of mm-hmm. the type of lifestyle comes with it, right? You know what I mean? And yeah. then, you know, you know, so this leads to a lot, so, you know, when we're dealing with, a lot of rappers having uh, uh, um, drug overdoses. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because they're self medicating. That's what I was just about to say. That was just about to say that. They're self medicating, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and like you know, when I was growing up, all black people did was smoke weed. Now these young yeah. people, they popping everything over the counter. You know what I'm saying? Like something all the way. We used to do. What you doing? What are you doing, man? <laughs> you taking white people drugs? They got insurance. You know, they got, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> mental health ain't a, ain't a stigma in their community. What are you doing, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. like they can do that. You know what I mean? Like, they got whatever. They got privilege or something. Their privilege might hit different with them or whatever. But, yeah, so, yeah. but, so, but so now, like, but so now, like, and so that's the reason, another reason why I talk about it because, you know what I'm saying? Like, too many, too many of us, um, 
too many of us artists, people in our culture, uh, we, we, we're, not, we're not taking care of our bodies. We're not taking care of our minds. And we definitely have family. Right. We definitely have legacies that we're trying to keep on or whatever. So, uh, you know, mm-hmm. this is this the second album in which I shout out saying thank you to my doctor or whatever. And just kind of yeah. going through that process or whatever. Because those, those type of things are important, are important. Right. Yeah. No, definitely send it to her. She's going to love it. I loved it, and I'm not your therapist. And I was like, if, if my client sent me this, I would cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like happy tears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, 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 big shout out to Dr. Russell. Um, and I, I've, been meaning to, I've been meaning to do this with other people, but I forgot. So you will be the second person I do this with. So I talked about, so this album is called Everything I Love. What are some things that you love? Um, things I love. I love my family. Obviously, you know, I love to travel. Um, I love seeing the world and meeting new people. Um, I love my work also. I like, you know, I like being a psychologist. I like the being part of that change for people is, is really moving every day. Um, it keeps me motivated to kind of go back even when it's hard. Um, I think those are the things. Oh, and I love wine. <laughs> Dancing, dancing. I love tango. Yeah, I'm gonna say like you, 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 you to move all the way to a whole other concert at the dance. You can't leave tango out. You can't leave tango out. <laughs> tango, I, you know, like, I almost feel like tango is like such a center part of my world. I don't even think of it as an extra thing, right? Like, like my whole life is kind of centered around it at this point. It's kind of crazy. Which is absolutely yeah. amazing. Which is absolutely amazing. <laughs> All right, we're well, cool. All right, so once again, for people watching, album drops Tuesday, September 14th on MarcelPeopleLikeThatBandCamp.com. If you don't follow, we're on the seventh episode now, so if you don't follow, it might be beef. I don't know what it is. You know, so you should know this by now. <laughs> Twitter, Marcel P. Black. Instagram, at Marcel P. Black. Facebook, M-A-R-C-E-L-P-B-L-S-E-K. Marcel P. Black. I mean, MarcelPeopleLike.com. Jamila, I really appreciate you. Um, before you go back to, you know, whenever the pandemic ends, whenever you come back to Tulsa, we definitely got to link and hang out a little bit. For sure. Absolutely. All right. Till next time, All good right. people. I will see you then. Peace.